Good morning, my dear friends from all over the world. How are you doing? I honestly cannot believe that October is already ending. I mean, it feels like time is running, not passing. <laughs> For me, this month was very excited. And if you follow me on Instagram, you may know why. I traveled with my hubby Jürgen to Egypt and we spent there almost three weeks. Friends, Egypt was like a dream. That was my second time traveling to Africa after visiting Morocco a few years ago and we had incredibly much fun in Egypt. We saw the pyramids, traveled with an overnight train, saw Abu Simbel, which is located around 30 kilometers from Sudan border, went to Siva Oasis near Libyan border, swam in salt lakes, did a Nile cruising and so much more. As always, we traveled there independently, not with a tourist organization, which made everything just more excited and adventurous. Anyway, I feel sorry to share this with you, but there won't be a travel vlog from Egypt coming on my channel. Since I decided to dedicate my vlogs to slow living, books and cozy art content. I enjoyed making the travel vlogs in the past very much, but filming at home brings me at the moment much more joy and peace. So if you want to see the travel highlights from me, as well as more from my daily life, and YouTube behind the scene content, you can follow me on Instagram. I try to be active on Instagram as much as I can and I would be very happy to see you there. So now, back to present. When we arrived back to Nuremberg after three weeks, I was amazed how the colors changed from green to yellow and vibrant red. The season changing happened just like a magic. It felt so refreshing after the heat in Egypt to feel the crispy cold autumn air in the morning. By the way, these are some souvenirs from Egypt. And as I was sharing with you in my last autumn book recommendation vlog, I read a spooky whimsical Neil Gaiman's The Graveyard Book. And believe it or not, I read the whole 300 plus pages book in one day, while we were on our way to Egypt, changing planes, waiting at the airport and so on. The only thing that was left for me to read back home in Nuremberg was the medal acceptance speech by Neil Gaiman at the end of his book, the story behind the book or what inspired him to write the novel, as well as checking out the printed version of handwritten pages and the sketches that didn't made into the book. And my friends, you were all right about the book. It was an amazing read. Five stars review from me. <laughs> I totally understand how Neil became so popular, not only between young adults, but also among older readers. Technically, the novel is aimed to 8 to 11 year old kids, but the brutal murder of the parents of the main character of the book, a boy named Bot, that happened at the beginning of the book, that changes the life of a baby boy bot forever may actually be a bit traumatizing for some children. So maybe before you gift your kids this book for Christmas, read it first on your own to see if your child can handle it without crying for days. By the way, the day when I was filming this vlog was the third day after we arrived totally exhausted from Egypt, so I tried to finally relax a bit and come back to my regular daily routine of drawing in the morning. Since we came back, I was only unpacking the suitcase for two days, doing the laundry washing, cleaning the apartment and sleeping for the rest of the time. Even on this third morning, I still didn't feel totally recovered from the trip. I actually woke up in the morning and for a few seconds I was not sure where I am. Am I in Cairo? In Luxor? In Lundberg? In Belgrade? <laughs> I don't know if that's ever happening to you too, but whenever I travel a lot and 
Every day or every second day, I'm waking up in a different city. It happens to me that I open my eyes in the morning and for a few very short moments, I actually don't know where I am. Then, of course, I get more awake, get normal, <laughs> and everything is fine again. Crazy, right? Well, in Egypt, we traveled and visited around nine destinations. We were sleeping in hotels, hostels, buses, ship, and the train. So no wonder I didn't know where I'm waking up this morning. Okay, friends. Sorry that this vlog is a bit all over the place, but I'm just trying to be honest with you. So, back to my drawing session. Since I was not able to draw or paint for almost three weeks, my hand felt kind of stiff and out of practice, and I didn't know where to start with my drawing. So, I just started drawing my little squirrel that is visiting us regularly on our balcony. Friends, she's so cute and sweet and fluffy. I have a lot of photos and clips of her. I will share them with you soon in one of my next videos. Or you can just go to my Instagram page. She's there very often in my stories. <laughs> One more random thought from me here. Isn't it amazing how, even when we take time and effort to build some positive and productive habits, we can again so fast jump out of them and lose them so easily. Like for example, morning routine. For me, morning is the most important part of my day. If I don't start my morning on a positive note, which for me means relaxed, thoughtful, productive and mindful, Chances are that probably my whole day will be bad. Only evening routine can save my bad day before going to sleep. <laughs> but what I also learned from my own experience and working on my self-awareness, mindfulness and productivity, the only way to go back to our good habits or routine is to just do it. Just start doing it, whatever that is. Stop procrastinating and postponing. In my case, this morning, it was drawing. I felt so much out of practice and didn't know where to start, but I just did it, without thinking a lot, without expecting to make a masterpiece after three weeks of not drawing at all, without thinking about big art concept ideas. I just started sketching my little squirrel that I saw in the morning, and that's it. It is actually that easy as it sounds. At the end, we all know, there is no other way around. We just do things or we just postpone them. So my little sketch turned out more or less okay. Remember friends, don't put too much pressure on yourself if you made a break from doing something. And end of sketching session was a perfect moment for me to go out take my short walk in the neighborhood and breathe some fresh air. I'm taking you with me for some grocery shopping. Since our fridge was totally empty and it was my turn to make a lunch, let's go shopping. <laughs>
Okay, back home and straight to the kitchen. I was so happy to be able to cook us a homemade lunch again after three weeks of only eating out in Egypt. Don't get me wrong, food in Egypt was amazing. I'm not complaining at all. Whenever we travel, we try to eat and test as much local food as possible. And Egyptian food is so tasty and delicious. I ate crazy amounts of tahini like never in my life. Okay, that's not true. I also eat tahini at home, almost every day. But Egyptian tahini, of course, cannot compare with store-bought tahini here in Germany or in Serbia. Egyptian tahini was so smooth and tasty, and we actually had it more often than hummus, which I was really surprised to experience. I actually thought that in Egypt, hummus is eaten much more than tahini, but somehow, Whenever we ate in a restaurant or street food stand, they always had tahini in their menu and hummus only occasionally. So, if you are from Egypt, please tell me, what is more traditional in your country, tahini or hummus? I was really a bit confused. Other food we were eating was of course koshari, kofta, shawarma, moussaka, fish, lots of eggplant, and bunch of fresh fruits. But although the Egyptian food was tasting so good and actually had some similarities with Serbian traditional food, I was still happy to make us for lunch just simple easy roasted veggies and salmon fish. Fast and tasty, just as I prefer. It smells great, my friends, and as you could see, it is extremely easy to prepare. Thank you, my friends, for watching my video, spending some time with me, and for supporting my channel. I'm very grateful for you being here. I wish you a nice, peaceful week, filled with wonderful, beautiful moments. Thank you for being here. Take care. Bye-bye.